Hey, it's Carly with Launch Code. In this video, we're going to be adding an ID, a unique ID field to our event model. Um, so in the last couple of videos, we created this event model to how inside of our coding events application to um, shape event data. We have two properties in here right now, name and description, but we don't ha yet have a way of uh, uniquely identifying a single event object. So for, you know, somehow we might come up with uh, two events that have the same name, how would we distinguish those? Um, so we're gonna be adding uh, event property um, that we've, essentially we've used it in, in other custom classes before. Um, it's gonna be an integer this time, and it's gonna be uh, this ID. So you have seen this construction before. This is probably the first time that you've seen it inside of a, an, an MVC application since we started working with these. Um, we don't want this ID to be able to be set outside of the class, really. So we want it to only be able to be set internally, um, which is why we're only giving it the get accessor method, uh, meaning that um, really the backing field behind this ID property is actually private. Um, so only the event class can interact with the ID field itself. In order to actually um, create the uh, um, ID for each object, each individual object, we'll also add an additional um, field inside of our event class, which is going to be private, also an integer, and this one's going to be called next ID. Um, and remember, this one's going to be lowercase because we're just going to be dealing with the field itself. Um, we're not necessarily going to assign any accessor method, so it's not going to be an auto-implemented property. Um, we want to initially set this next ID uh, property to, or sorry, next ID field to one, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And I just realized we also want this item to be static, which is crucially important. So this is uh, basically a static counter variable. So what this does is re remember that static fields only exist. Um, within the class definition itself, they don't have any bearing on each individual object. So we're saying uh, we have this static counter variable, which at the very beginning of the application running is equal to one. Um, and we'll make use of, we're calling it tie these together inside of the constructor and say that we want, uh, whenever an event object is created, we want its ID field to be set to whatever the current value of next ID is. Um, and then in order to make each ID property on an event object unique, um, every time an event is created, we're incrementing um, this next ID field. So after the, so the first object that's created, we'll get an ID of one, the next we'll get an ID of two, and so on and so forth. Um, with this information, since we've added this uh, ID field now, we can add in a couple of items, which I had mentioned that we were gonna put on pause um, for a little bit, which are these the equals and hash code methods, these overrides. So we uh, are okay to implement these now because we do actually want to make take advantage of this ID field since it is a unique identifier for each object, each event object that's being created. Um, it's a good candidate uh, to be the comparer in the equals method, and it's a good candidate to use for creating the hash code. Um, so we can add these in now, again, just because it's a, a best practice to add these items in any custom class that you're creating. Uh, we won't actually take advantage of them in this video lesson, and we probably won't even touch upon them until we get into, um, you know, wiring up our application with the database. But uh, now we have them, we don't have to think about them until we need them. So to test uh, using this, to test to test the unique ID generation, we'll add another item to our event table view. So we're just gonna add, even though we don't want um, a user to be able to set the ID field when it's created, um, we can just add something for our, our own verification that we have indeed created this event field and it increments as we expect. So let's add an ID field to our event view table and just ask each event object to display its ID field. Stomp the application, rerun it. So uh, we'd expect that we are, the creation of each event will um, look pretty much the same as it has, or will look exactly the same as it has before. 
the uh, what's new here is that we'll be able to view um, a third row, or excuse me, a third column in our event event data table. Uh, so no events yet. Let's create an event. Let's say strange loop, our old favorite. Okay, great. So uh, we do know that some um, new field is being created. We can't yet confirm that our um, counter is working, so we'll have to add, add at least one more. Let's say Grace Hopper conference. I think this one's in Florida. And we add this one. Okay, so we do have um, we do have those unique IDs being generated. So again, not something that uh, we need the the user to set. Um, so we don't. This is this additional column really is is for our own verification that our code works the way that we want and expect it to work. It's not so much for um, any additional feature on the uh, application itself. But now that we do have that ID, um, we are able to move forward in. Uh, verifying unique event objects, which will come in handy soon.